friends, I want to introduce you to someone. That's, of course, Elvis on the left. The lady in the middle is Lillian. Uh, her last name was Mann. Her first married husband, uh, the first man she married, her last name was Mann. Uh, she also got divorced and married a Fortenberry. That was her final married name. The man on the right-hand side is Wayne Mann, which is her son by her first marriage. I'm going to introduce you to Wayne, and I'm also going to introduce you to another Elvis cousin, Janet Smith. But this story is about Wayne and his brothers. A lot of you remember the National Enquirer photo of Elvis in the coffin. And this photo was definitely, beyond a shadow of a doubt, taken by a member of the Mann family. Uh, it was not Wayne, as you'll see uh, later in this. I asked him directly, and he tells me it was not. But it was the brother named Billy. Uh, we know that it was Billy, and we'll talk about uh, how we know that and what went on and how it was done and what I speculate and. Y'all can speculate down in the comment section of what you think happened. Stay tuned. And one more thing I wanted to mention is I filmed this two different times. The first clips you're going to see were uh, Wayne and uh, Janet uh, at the 40th anniversary at 2017, uh, August 2017. The last clip you're going to see was January of 2019 at the Elvis birthday week celebration. So that's the reason for the different ones. And I just never thought that I had enough to do a story, but I think I have an idea of how I can tell this story and use these clips. So here we go. So you're Elvis's cousin. Yes. And you're his wife? No. You're another cousin? Yeah. So y'all brother and sister? Uh, and his cousin. We're first cousins. First cousins. We're okay, first so who... On mom's side or dad's side? My mother, there was some mother with sisters. Okay, so Gladys' sister was your mom. Yeah. And Gladys was my father's sister. Okay, so your uh, Gladys would be your her brother's daughter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not trying to confuse you. So tell me stories. What have y'all what have y'all got? Interesting things. So y'all knew Elvis when he was a kid. Oh yeah. Before he was ever famous. I wasn't around him very much when he was killed because I was a kid. Yeah, I get it. But you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, he would be 80. So you were born after he was famous then, I would say. Yeah. 48. 48, yeah. That's a... This is me and Elvis, my mother. Will. This is your mom? Yeah. And this is you? Yeah. That's yeah. very cool. I've never seen that picture before. Yeah, that was before you got famous, so... Tell me again. That's before he got famous. That was before, yeah. Now, where was that? In Tupelo or here? Oh, here in Memphis. Where was this at? In Lauderdale? No, it was on uh, Carroll Street. Carroll Street? 1953. So, did you live on Carroll or did yeah. they live on Carroll? We live on Carroll. You lived on Carroll. Because I've, I've heard the Carroll address yeah. as one of his addresses, but I don't think he ever lived there. You lived there, right? Okay, so that clears that up. Because a lot of people say that he lived at Carroll sometime between Alabama and uh, Getwell. You know, I know he lived at Safford's, which is right behind the high school, for just a few months. He lived in Lauderdale Forge. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, no, he never lived on Carroll Street. Yeah. So that's where you live? Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. So how was he as a kid? Oh, he was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. He was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I bet he was. Did you hang out with him after he was famous a lot? Well, yeah, I used to ride Graceland, go skating with him, and movies. I never did travel with him. Well, it's not there anymore, but it used to be on Jackson Avenue. I can be here. Yeah, in Memphis. Oh, okay. okay, okay. So, what's the history of the theater? Uh, <clears throat> me and my sister, Elvis, and another first cousin went there in 1953 to see High Noon. And that's a picture of the theater and a piece of the tile that was in there. Oh. Yeah. And you said high noon? Yeah. 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 Very cool. And that was what year? 53. 53. So that was before he was famous then. Oh, yeah. Wow. Interesting. So Zor Theater. Very cool. Any other history? Anything you want to tell? 
about the only yeah, time I got to see him is when he uh, went to the fairgrounds and uh, went to the fairgrounds. Yeah. That's when I got to see him and everything. Okay. Yeah. When he would play at the fairgrounds? Yeah, when he yeah. would uh, go there. And he went to the fairgrounds out. Yeah, he, oh, okay, you're talking about uh, Liberty Land. Yeah. When he would go to Liberty Land. Yeah. 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 Very cool. So did you attend the funeral? Oh, yeah. So there's speculation that you took the picture. Who knows? Is that you? <laughs> That's what people say. Oh. Isn't that what they say? Yeah. But it wasn't you. It wasn't me. I swear. <laughs> So you know I had to ask that. I bet you get that question a lot. Don't you? Oh, yeah. He was at the door taking everybody's cameras for the winning. Oh really? Yeah. What was it like that day? Oh, it was sad. It was something else, man. Yeah, it was a sad day, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. I can't even imagine. Yeah, in the, I'm sad about it and I wasn't there. We was in the third car behind the hearse going to the funeral. You were in the third car? Behind the hearse. So they moved him. They had him right by the door where people could just circle in right in front of the stairs, right? right? And they could just circle in, circle back out. I, I had to take up cameras so they didn't take pictures of Yeah. So where do you think that picture came from? Is that picture uh, fake? It looks fake to me. I don't think it is. You think it's real? Yeah. Okay. I don't know who took it. Well, that's interesting. Well, nice to meet you, man. Amen. Great to see you today. Yes, sir. And thanks for these stories. That's great. Thank you. So he was showing some photos of the Suzors number two that they went to a movie at. And you can see that's Pierce Street and Jackson. So I am on Jackson Street, standing across the street, and I'm going to show you now. This is what remains of the Suzors number two. When I get close, he had tile from here for sale with, along with photographs. That's what you were seeing. And you can see that that is the Suzor's Theater. This was Suzor's number two. Number one was over in town next to Ellis Auditorium, and I will be doing a story about it later because it plays a very specific part in Elvis history from the beginning. But this right here is where the Suzor number two was. And they took some of that tile and they have it for sale. You can see this right over there is where Humes High School is, literally right there. But you went and saw movies with Elvis oh, and yes. Suzor. Uh -huh. What movies? Well, uh, see. Suzor number two on Jackson. He went there in 1952, much high noon. Uh, and that one is, uh, Suzor number two is by Humes, or is that yes. the other one? Uh -huh. Okay, so that's Humes. Right. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. So tell me some other Elvis related stories. Well, Can you think of anything? Well, you used to go to skating all the time. At the Rainbow Skating Ring on Lamar. And we used to choose up sides, you know, guys up on the side and they'd meet in the middle and knock each other down. And uh, he hit me with his skate one night accidentally. And I got a scar on my leg here. Right there. So Elvis did that scar right yeah. there to you. Uh -huh. right. Accidentally, but. <laughs> Not many people have Elvis scars, I don't <laughs> no. think. <laughs> so, and, and do you want to tell a story? Have you got a story you can think of? Well, we used to go to the fairgrounds and everything with him. And he would get on them bumper cars. Mm -hmm. Did liked... you ride the bumper cars or no, were you too young? No, I was too young. Yeah. I rode the roller coaster. You did? So you rode the Zip and Pippin? Yeah. That's cool. So you did y'all both ride the Zip and Pippin with Elvis? I didn't. You didn't, but you did? No, uh, he was on the uh, front of it. Very cool. So, y'all both came from Tupelo, right? Right. Tell me about that. Do you recall that? Oh, yeah. We lived on a farm on South Teller Road, down from the, uh, where the museum's at now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we lived on a farm down there. Our house burned up twice in the same place. Uh, really? Yeah. Now, South Teller Road is, is, like you say, really close to where the Elvis's house is right. and the memorial and all that uh -huh. kind of stuff. But there was a farm. It wasn't as, as many houses as, no, no. as there are now. It was a whole different ball game back then. Yeah, we lived about a mile down the road from where the house is. Yeah. Do you recall those days? A little of it. It was a long time ago. Yeah. I was 10 years old when I came to Memphis. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? I remember when I left Memphis. I mean, people were, yeah. So tell me about um, your siblings. 
Well, I had three brothers and two sisters. Okay. And they all passed away except me. Yeah, and what's their names? Uh, well, it was Charles, Charles, Billy, Bob, Lola, and Bobby. And Bobby. Yeah. And how about you, brothers and sisters? Well, I got three brothers and one sister. Who were they? Jackie, Nikki, Tony, and Brenda. And Brenda. Brenda. Mm -hmm. okay. That's very cool. Y'all got any other stories you can think of? Not right off. And I know you you uh, offer autographed photos of you and Elvis and that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. And they can get those things through John through uh, ElvisPawnShop.com. Does that sound yeah. right? Uh -huh. But y'all usually come to the events as well. Uh, yeah. You gonna plan on being here in August? Yes. Okay, so this August, uh, y'all most likely will be here for Elvis Con. It'll be here. Right. So let's talk about that. So friends, if you get a chance to come in August 2019, they will be here representing. They'll have uh, photographs that they can uh, autograph for you. And so make sure you come say hello to Wayne and Janet. Janet. Jane. Wayne and Janet. Janet. Wayne and Jane. Janet. Janet. Oh, Janet. I'm sorry. I'm having trouble hearing you, Janet. Okay. So, Wayne and Janet. Right? All right. And uh, I will do my best to remember your names next time I see you. <laughs> and I'm ashamed of it. I've seen you a bunch of times that I have trouble with names. I can't remember people's names. Yeah. I remember faces, but I can't remember names. <laughs> I'm the spa guy. I'm Billy. Oh, Billy. <laughs> Billy the spa guy. So thank you all so much for taking time out You're today. Welcome. And guys, go buy some, uh, tighten up and, and get you some autographed pictures. This is family right here. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Appreciate you. Uh -huh. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, Janet. I'll remember your name next time, Janet. Oh, okay. Billy. <laughs> so you heard earlier, and I'll play it again in a moment, but you heard Wayne uh, and Janet talking about that Wayne was standing outside of the front of Graceland taking people's cameras so they could not take photographs. That is a fact, and it wasn't just uh, Wayne. There were several of the Mann brothers that were there, and I think other family members that were there. And this is the photo that they supposedly took. Now, there's a lot of speculation about this photo, and you saw that it was on the front cover of the National Enquirer. The fact that Billy Mann took this picture and sold it to the National Enquirer is no longer up for debate. That did happen. That's exactly what happened. I've even uh, read some things from uh, Billy's daughter saying that she found the paperwork from the National Enquirer where they paid him $18,000. I have reached out to her and have been unable to get in contact with her, but maybe one day. If I do, I'll let you know. But the reality is, is they supposedly took this camera, and I want you to look at how small it is. I'm going to show you several different shots of it with different people and different things. You see a penny, a fingernail. This thing was tiny. That picture, if it was taken on this little tiny camera, was nothing but a miracle. I looked for examples of photos taken on this camera and can find zero examples. I believe that if this camera was capable of taking good photographs, good enough to appear on the front of the National Enquirer, there would be a plethora of photos that were taken with this camera out there, not just Elvis, but other subjects. I find zero on Google. That is a clue in my opinion. So here's what I think happened. I think they paid... Billy Mann or the Mann brothers or the Mann family, $18,000. They got him to buy a spy camera. He went in there and took photographs, exchanged the camera with the photographs on it for the $18,000 check. The film didn't come out. They couldn't make anything of it. So they had to come up with a solution and they used photographs and different things and did old school Photoshop. Now they couldn't get on Photoshop and do it digitally, but back then they would take photographs and cut things out and overlaying one on the top of the other and then take a photo of it to create a photo. In fact, if you look at this photo, it almost looks like a drawing. The, the 
coffin part of it. Look at this. So see, that coffin part of it looks like a drawing to me more so than a photograph. And you can see the side of his face. Now, I'm going to show you a photograph that I believe could have been used with some manipulation. Here's an example. Meaning you draw on the eyes and you crop the hair off with a, you can do it with a pair of scissors. You just literally cut it out of a photograph. And the thing we got to keep in mind is the National Enquirer only had uh, photographs that were relatively recent for them to pull from. So I think these photographs of this day would be something that they would definitely have. And I think they took one of these photographs, turned it sideways, and look at the age of Elvis here, and now look at the age of Elvis here. It is a very, very similar look. This is definitely not a 1977 overweight, bloated look like we would expect. This is not an actual photograph, in my opinion, friends. This is a collage of things to create a photograph that ended up causing the National Enquirer to have giant sales. This came out September the 6th, 1977, and they sold six and a half million copies. That was the 1,000% profit over the $18,000 investment, more or less. It was actually over that. But that's what I think happened. They were in a position where if they put that out, they were going to have giant sales, so they created a photograph to make it happen. Now, I'm not saying Billy Mann didn't take the photograph. In fact, I'm sure that he did. I just don't think the photographs were usable and they had to manufacture a photograph. And I believe that that's what happened right here. Tell me what you think happened down in the comments. Tighten up and thank you for watching. So did you attend the funeral? Not yet. So there's speculation that you took the picture. Is that you? That's what people say. Isn't that what they say? But it wasn't you. It wasn't me. I swear. <laughs> so where do you think that picture came from? Is that picture fake? It looks fake to me. I don't think it is. You think it's real? Yeah. I don't know who took it. That's interesting. Well, nice to meet you, man. Great to see you today. So I wanted to play that clip one more time because I wanted to make sure you heard when I asked him if that picture was fake. He didn't say what picture. He didn't say anything like that. He said, oh, no, that picture was not fake. I don't know who took it, but it was not fake, meaning it was a photo. So he believes that his brother took that photograph. Just a little tale.